Man, oh man, pro wrestling, the WWE has come to the city of Los Angeles, La La Land, in the form of their new basketball franchise, the LA Fakers. What an absolute gong show a couple of nights ago with that fantasy sold as reality sideshow, La Queen, La Victim, and his poor son, unqualified to be playing pro ball. Man, oh man, the great Dr. Jerry Buss must be rolling, rolling in his grave. Michael McLean, BrassBallsVideos.com. I am an ex-professional hockey coach, ex-amateur championship hockey coach, turned eight-figure entrepreneur. I have been a team owner, two different teams, uh, I am now a small business owner, husband, and proud father. You can also download a free copy of my brand new book. Uh, it's probably not for fans of the LA Fakers or not for anybody from LA Clown World, but the name of the book is Five Ways to Unfuck Your Life in the Next 30 Days. Actually, a lot of you posers and actors and LA creeps you probably need to take that book to heart and download it and get your uh, get your head turned on straight. Pro wrestling everywhere. Pro wrestling everywhere. It started, uh, you know, a decade ago with anti-social media. Doesn't matter if it's flake book, doesn't matter if it's Instagram, whether you've got TikTok brain, whatever it is, you have to understand as a husband, a father, an entrepreneur, a small business owner, a coach or a leader, that what we see around us now is almost 99% fake. It's pro wrestling, it's not real. What we see on the internet, whether it's trips to Cuba or trips to Mexico or what we're trying to buy on Amazon or what we see from the, the woke NBA or that mess of a league, that WNBA, it's pro wrestling, it's not real. And almost all of it's fake. You look at the, the LA, the once proud, the once proud, you know, run by Dr. Buss and, and, and managed by the great Pat Riley and the great Jerry West and, and incredible players. You know, you had Abdul Jabbar, you had Magic, you had James Worthy, you know, you had it just get Kobe. I mean, it was a juggernaut and it's been turned into by uh, his daughter and those dingbat brothers into an absolute country club for people like La Princess to work on their legacy. I'm gonna pay you 40, 50 sheets a year so you can work on your legacy. Who the hell buys into this horse shit if you're the owner of the team and you're serious about winning championships? How the hell can something like this happen and you bring in a guy who winning is no longer the number one thing. I mean, LeBron James would laugh behind closed doors. The Lakers have zero chance of winning another title as long as he's there. And just like other, every other organization that he's been with, they're so fucking happy when he's gone. He's radioactive after a few years. He's total cancer. And he leaves the organization almost incapacitated because it's just me, 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 me. Any of you punch drunk tomato cans who think that this was ever about Bronny, are you kidding me? This is a kid who wasn't the best player on his high school team. This was a player who wasn't the best player on his college team. And admittedly, the poor kid, especially after the cardiac issues, any, any intelligent father that gave more a shit about his, his kid than himself wouldn't have him being forced drafted and then coming to a training camp where he has no business being and putting his entire life under the microscope when he doesn't have the genetics of dad and he's never going to. And what's, what's the success of all this after that, that circus show was over last night? The second that LeBron is no, part, no more part of the Lakers or he's, he finally, finally pulls the plug and retires, you think his kid's gonna be in the NBA? You think his kid's gonna be in the NBA? But this is just something that's as fake as it gets. This is the work of actors, of posers, of people that put on the knee pads and cheer. I, I'm, 
I'm shocked. I'm horrified that the Griffies were part of this. That Ken Griffey, who wasn't a Hall of Famer, and his kid, who was a Hall of Famer, now that's a real son uh, duel. In other words, your kid's even better than you. He's a first pick, and he goes on to a Hall of Fame career. That's something that we can celebrate because it's fucking well real. It's not, it's not something that was made up when the kid was in diapers. Oh, it's my dream to play with my two boys. Well, if they're good enough, we'll try and make that happen. But you need to have progressive cultures like the LA fakers to make this happen. Because what owner in their right mind would ever agree to something like this? Sure, you know, we're gonna bring you in. We're gonna overpay you in your last few years. You're an absolute coach killer. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hire your fifth coach, who's a podcaster. Uh, there's no room for champions like Dan Hurley, and you ain't gonna win anything for us. But yes, we're gonna help you fulfill this dream of yours that has nothing to do with winning, has nothing to do with team culture, so that your kid can come off the bench and play with you. Now what? Now what? Talk about fake. Talk about fantasy sold as reality. You have, okay, you have an NBA now that's the most emasculated league in professional sports. It's unfucking watchable. It's un, if you've got, if you're not suffering from uh, brain damage, it's unwatchable. It's almost completely unwatchable. Then you have, you have uh, Bus as the owner. She's a fake owner. She's not a real owner. She doesn't know jack shit about basketball. And she's literally driving with her siblings, her, her dad's incredible franchise, into the ground. Well, do you have a real head coach in L.A.? Do the Fakers have a real head coach? J.J. Redick, are you kidding me? Dan Hurley laughed his way out of town. He was like, I don't want to be here and they don't want me, but thanks for the increase in my call. He could, he'd never participate in something like that. Could you imagine a Pat Riley or a, or a Nick Saban or a Bill Belichick or a Vince Lombardi or a Scotty Bowman or uh, any of these guys, self-respecting, serious coaches and team builders? Do you think that they would have anything to do with this? I, I would just, I'd love to have a beer with Riley. I'd love to see what a guy like that thinks. Like he must be just, he must be crying he's laughing so hard because it's just one less team you have to compete with because they're not a serious organization. And this has all been in the making, of course, for, for you know, 15 years. And it's all, you know, you know how much, how, you know how much, you know how much virtue signaling, you know how much ass kicking LaQueen had to go to make this happen? Since that kid's been able to dribble a basketball, it's been like, it's my dream to play with my kid. It's my dream to play with my kid. I'm the most narcissistic fucking athlete on earth. I don't give a shit about anybody but myself. I don't even care if my kid likes basketball. And hell or high water, we're gonna play together. And it's really gonna be magical as that tomato can uh, Adam Shine says, or that Stephen A. Myth. I'm not sure that he even watches sports. Oh, that was memorable, Matt. What the fuck was memorable about, about that last night? Something so, you might as well say WrestleMania 1 was memorable. WrestleMania 30 was memorable. It's just, it's all just pro wrestling. The LA Fakers are a pro wrestling organization. And most of those athletes, not just on the Lakers, it's a handful of serious teams, you got, a, you got a serious franchise in Boston. You have a serious franchise in Oklahoma. You have a serious franchise um, a couple of other places. But are you kidding me? These are at, This is clown world in L.A. And it's the perfect representation of the state and the city. The city of posers, the city of frauds, the city of fake. It's all going to collapse in the next 10 years anyways. Hollywood's going to collapse. The movie industry is going to collapse. The music business is going to collapse. And the NBA is going to collapse. Remember where you heard it first. Because it's just a matter of time. You can't keep secrets forever. So they were all there last night. They had uh, the Griffies. That's embarrassing. They were a part. How desperate do you have to be? How bored do you have to be to be a part of something like that? Because you just being there means you approve of it. 
and it puts you, puts them on your level. Oh, I play, you know, my kid, I play with my kid. My kid's a Hall of Famer, but uh, this also LeBron and Bronny are now the same. And I love how the woke NBA and that entire organization never mentions ESPN as, as, as rotten to the core as you can get. Never mention the only family who really did it. The only family besides the Griffies who did something that's actually magical, which was Gordy Howe and his two boys. And not to mention that and, and honor that and have, and have the boys there just shows you what kind of pro wrestling fake fantasy is reality this is. So Gordy Howe played, he played five seasons of pro hockey with his boys. Not five minutes, five seasons. He played four years with two with his boys, Marty and uh, Mark, in the old WHA, which was a grade below the NHL, but, but still a very good pro league. And they played on the same line, think about that, for four seasons in Houston, in the old WHA. Then they played an entire season in the NHL, the top hockey league in the world. And Gordy's getting up there by now. And he's playing with his two boys and he played a full season, a fifth season, first one in the NHL with the Hartford Whalers. Now that's something to talk about. Those guys were drafted, they were there on merit. It wasn't any of this, this Los Angeles um, fakers DEI. It wasn't didn't earn it. It was, we're fucking right, we've earned it. First of all, Gordy Howe, in my opinion, my biased opinion, third greatest player to ever put skates on. Gretzky's number one, Bob Yor's number two, Gordy Howe's number two, number three. My dad had the privilege of meeting Gordy Howe, Mr. Elbow, when we were kids, and he said it was like shaking hands with a blacksmith. And my dad is, my dad's nickname, Frank the Tank. So he knows a real man when he shakes his hand. And when he met Hal years ago, he said, man, that guy shakes hands like a blacksmith. But here's the thing. With Griffey, his kid was a Hall of Famer. With Hal, Mark went on to be a Hall of Fame player. So Hal had two guys, two kids, who were there on merit. They were in the NHL because they played junior, they got drafted, and they were there on their merit. On their merit. Ken Griffey Jr. was drafted first on his merit. He's in the Hall of Fame on his merit. And the same happened. Gordy Howe, third greatest player of all time. And it just happened that his boys were competent players. And then Mark Howe had such an illustrious career in the NHL that he's in the Hall of Fame. Two Howes in the Hall of Fame. That's called merit. That's not this other inclusive, okay, made up, fake, fake this, fake that. But it all comes down to our social media world where nothing is as it appears. People get on there on social media and everybody's vacation's better and everybody's vehicle's better and everybody's house is better and everybody's fitter and everybody's better looking and everybody's happier and it's fucking horseshit. It's manufactured mental illness is what it is. It's manufactured mental illness. And that's why I train my elite men to stay the fuck out of those rat poison swamps. Because that's exactly what they are. I don't care if it's fake book. I don't care uh, if it's TikTok. I don't care if you're scrolling your iPhone. But that stuff's all pro wrestling too. It's none of it's real. None of it's true. And it's all fake. And it's all designed no different than, than that, than, than that uh, clown show last night. It, it doesn't make us feel good. It makes us unhappy. It makes us sad. It makes us anxious. It makes us depressed. Because we think that everybody else is doing better than us. When it's not true. When it's absolutely not true. So as a man, I didn't watch one second. I don't watch a second of that NBA. I read a couple sentences about it in one of my newsletters today. And I, I had a laugh out loud moment. But like, it's so, it's so important that we vote with our feet in our wallets. And just say, you know what? I'm not gonna participate in pro wrestling wherever it is in business or life today. If it's not real, I'm gonna cut it out of my life. I'm gonna curate it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the rope, I'm gonna swift sort it. If it's not real, I don't want it in my life. 
pornography, it's, it's not real. Gambling is, is not real. Alcohol is escape. Weed is escape. On your phone, 20 hours a day is escape. NBA, escape. Like it's all pro wrestling and it's not real and it's killing your mental health. So a number of years, I haven't watched the NBA since the Raptors won it in 2019 because it's unwatchable. But I also am voting with my feet in my wallet. I used to spend thousands of dollars going to, you know, football games and basketball. No more. Absolutely no more. I'm not going to give money to people that dislike me, that openly dislike me. I'm not going to give money to an emasculated organization like the NBA. Are you kidding me? And I'm not going to give my time or my energy or my focus or my money to something that's not real. And that wasn't real last night. That was made up. That was planned. That was Hollywood choreographed. The house, that was real. You know, that was real. Ken Griffey, that was real. Hall of Fame son. That last night was not real. And they're not serious. And it shows me that that organization is going to continue to crumble. I don't care how many games they win this year. JJ Reddick will be gone after a year. That guy can't fucking coach. I heard the indications. They asked one of these, one of these, uh, one of these guys all oh, uh, from the bought and paid for media. Oh, the players find him very detailed. It's early on, but his training camp was very structured and detailed. Like fuck. I've been around some of the top Hall of Fame football coaches and hockey coaches on planet Earth. And I can tell whether a guy's a winner or whether the guy's a winner. And I'll tell you right now, he ain't no Mike Krzyzewski. He ain't no Pat Riley. He ain't no Vince Lombardi, and he ain't no he ain't no uh, Andy Reid. Could you imagine? Can you imagine Andy Reid or Mahomes putting up with something like this? In Kansas City, you have a quarterback that only wants to win rings. That's his only thing. It's his number one thing. I want to win more rings than Brady, and all I want to do is win. I don't care whatever it takes. In Pittsburgh, in the NHL, you have a guy in Sidney Crosby. I want to win as many rings as I can. I'll take less money. I don't care. It's the only thing that matters to me. And in with Brady in New England, that was all. I just want to win rings. Five aren't enough. Six aren't enough. Seven aren't enough. That's all I'm focused on. Could you imagine any of those organizations or Joe Montana back in the day? Or any of these these famous, you know, Kobe and, and, and back in the Laker days with Magic? Could you imagine them seeing this kind of horseshit? Where does winning come into the equation? When's, when's, uh, when does all this, when does the clock strike, strike midnight and we actually go back to reality? Yep, fake WWE wrestling has arrived in LA. It's the perfect place for it. And man, oh man, talk about a dog and pony show. A dog and pony show. I feel sorry for that young man. I, uh, I mean, that, that's, that's just something that you should... You know, you put, you do it and you say, oh, well, this was such a magical family moment, like fuck it was. That was as actor, as poser, as fraud, and the people that clap for that, shame on you. You like, you like fake, you like, you like the, uh, the made up stuff. And it's all pro wrestling. Pro wrestling is the NBA, and that La Victim and Brawny show there, that was, uh, that was, that was the ultimate, that was the ultimate of next level fake. Now, where they go from here, you know, a lot of people have had to put the knee pads on to make this happen. J.J. Redick, you know, had to do as he had to good, be a good little boy. You know, uh, Bus had to be a good little owner. Uh, the, the teammates had to keep their mouths closed. You know, everybody had to do their little part to appease the queen. And now that it's over, what's, where, where's the winning? Where's the winning? How are you going to beat, how are you going to beat some of these massive powerhouses in the West? Does that ever come up in conversation? That's the way Andy Reid thinks. That's the way Nick Saban thinks. That's the way Vince Lombardi thinks. That's the way Scotty Bowman coached. Not these, not these sidetrack shows, dog and pony shows that have nothing to do with winning. I'm glad I got that off my chest. I'm, I gave two videos to this. I'm not giving any more to it because that's enough attention. I just had to get my piece said about Gordy Howe how they really did it the right way, how Hal played with his kids for five years. Both of them were good players. One of them was a Hall of Fame. 
Same thing for the Griffies. They shouldn't even been there. And at least in his case, his kid was a Hall of Famer. That was a real father and son teams, not this made up pro wrestling they tried to push down your throat last night. You can download a free copy of my book. It's for winners, not for whiners, for champions, not chumps. My free gift to you. Two words that can change your life and two words that change mine. Be relentless.